الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين جاهدوا فينا لنهدينهم سبلنا وإن الله لمع المحسنين صدق الله العظيم We begin on Allah's blessed name We praise Him and we glorify Him and we beseech Him this night for His guidance and for His blessings and for His protection as we attempt to address the subject Islamic spirituality the forgotten path and we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers and in particular on the last of them all the blessed prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam our subject tonight is spirituality and our subject tomorrow night inshallah will be dajjal the false messiah and yet we begin tonight with dajjal to show the link between tonight's talk and tomorrow night. The Prophet said sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam, every Prophet of Allah has warned his people about Dajjal. But I'm going to tell you something about him which none has said before me. Dajjal sees with his left eye He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grape. But your Lord is not one-eyed. Between the jar's eyes on his forehead is written kafir, kafara. And every mu'min that is, every believer whose Islam has entered into his heart, and so it has become Iman, every mu'min will be able to read and recognize Kafir. Whether that mu'min is Katib, he can read and write, or Ghayru Katib, he cannot read, he cannot write. He still be able to read. This is by far the most important hadith on the job. Since this information was saved until the very last. No more prophets after Muhammad Islam. What is the implication? If the, the mu'min can read, it means that Abu Lahab can't read. Huh? But Abu Lahab has a pair of eyes. How come he can't read? But Ali radiallahu ta'ala who could read. Is it that Ali radiallahu ta'ala who isn't reading with these eyes? Do we have any other eyes besides these eyes? The University of Singapore says no. United Nations says no. Governments around the world say no. We have no other eyes beside these eyes. We have no other ears beside these ears. We have no other means of acquiring knowledge other than through the senses, through observation, and through the rational faculty. But the Quran says, yes, in addition to these eyes, we have all, we have internal eyes. 
In addition to these airs, we have internal airs. In addition to our external faculties for acquiring knowledge, we can also acquire knowledge internally. For example, in Surah Al-Hajj, now if you want to teach this subject, make sure you memorize. Brother Imran is going, not going to be here forever. You have to teach the subject when he's gone. So memorize. Surah Al-Hajj. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the people who, like Uncle Sam, internally dead. And he says, أَفَلَمْ يَسِيرُوا فِي الْأَرْضِ Will they not travel through the earth? فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ كُلُوبٌ يَأْكِلُونَ بِهَا So that perhaps, perchance, by traveling through the earth, the dead heart might come alive. PhD from Harvard, yes, but the heart is dead. <laughs> the heart is dead. Multimillionaire with a dozen Mercedes Benz, yes, but the heart is dead. Travel through the earth and see the signs of Allah on the earth. And perchance by seeing the signs of Allah, your dead heart might come alive. فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا And when the dead heart comes alive, then the heart can understand what the intellect and reason could never understand. أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا When the heart comes alive, the heart can hear what otherwise could not be heard. فَإِنَّهَا لَا تَعْمَ الْأَبْصَارِ Truly, it's not these eyes which are blind. وَلَكِنْ تَعْمَ الْقُلُوبُ الَّتِي فِي السُّدُورِ What is blind is the heart which is inside the chest. And so the heart can see. And so in addition to this eye, we also have this eye. Now it is possible for us to understand the hadith. The jal sees with one eye, his left eye. The left eye symbolizes his external capacity for sight. The jal is blind in the right eye, indicating that the jal is internally blind. And therefore that all those who follow the jal will all be internally blind. What is the price that we pay? if we are internally blind. PhD from University of Singapore, but inside, blind. What is the price that we pay? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declares that huge numbers of people are condemned for the hellfire. What did they do? That they are condemned for the hellfire. لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ لَا يَفْقَهُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ أَعْيُنٌ لَا يُبْصِرُونَ بِهَا وَلَهُمْ آذَانٌ لَا يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا They have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have hearts, but they cannot understand. A people who are internally blind are a people who in the age of Dajjal are destined for the hellfire. How does Allah describe such a people? He says, Ula'ika kal an'am. They're just like cattle. What? With a PhD from MIT? Yes. Yes, just like cattle, ulaika kalanam, balhum adal. Rather, they are more misguided than cattle. Ulaika hum al These are the ones who are truly heedless, heedless of the signs of Allah. This is our introduction to spirituality in Islam. Spirituality is the path through which the heart comes alive. 
And when the heart comes alive, then the heart can see and the heart can hear and the heart can understand what rationality can never penetrate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down Surah Al-Kahfi in the Quran, Surah number 18, the cave. And the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam identified this surah as the only surah in the Quran which protects from Dajjal. Identified this surah as the only surah in the Quran which protects from Dajjal. Recite the first ten ayat of Surah Al-Kahfi over Dajjal and he won't be able to harm you. Hmm? But he said something else about Surah Al-Kahfi. You know, these eyes can't see unless there is light. Huh? Similarly, this eye cannot see without noor. Can't buy that noor in the stock market. No? Where does the noor come from? Allahu noor samawati wal ard. Allah encompasses the totality of the noor in the heavens and the earth. You cannot get noor other than from Allah. Not even from the Security Council of the UN. You can't get noor. Only from Allah. So if we are to be protected from Dajjal and therefore to be able to see with the internal eye because he does not see with the internal eye we need Noor. He said Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam recite Surah Al-Kahfi on a Friday and it will deliver to you Noor from the heavens to the earth. And that Noor will stay with you until the next, until the next Friday. So now I'm going to ask you to raise your hands. Let me see how many people have recited Surah Al-Kafi last Friday. What happened to your hands? Something wrong? Huh? Shall I come back to lecture in this masjid? This is the dearest masjid in Singapore for me. Fourteen years ago when I came to Singapore for the first time, I came as a guest of this masjid. I lectured here in this masjid for the first time. I slept in a room at the back there. Hmm? Most of those who were with me at that time have all passed away, but Haji Abdul Majid is still here. Alhamdulillah. So this masjid is the dearest of all. It is named after Mas Molana Abdul Alim Siddiqui. Do you know who he was? My teacher, my sheikh, my murshid, was Molana Dr. Muhammad Fadlur Rahman Ansari, Rahimahullah, whose masterpiece, the two volumes, the Quranic Foundations and Structure of Muslim Society, is now available. I don't know if there are any copies still left outside. His teacher, his sheikh, his murshid, was Mawlana Abdul Ali Siddiqui, Rahimahullah. So I'm the second generation from him. Hmm? The link between me and him. So next time I come, I want to see your hands raised. That you are now reciting Surah Al-Kahfi every Friday without fail. Insha'Allah. In Surah Al-Kahfi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us wonderful instruction on the subject of the consequences of not having the capacity to see with the internal eye. He takes Musa alayhi salam, the Nabi who was sent to Banu Israel, who say that they are the chosen people of Allah. All the rest of mankind are just Gentile. We are the chosen of Allah. We are the elite. We are the select. Musa alayhi salam has delivered a khutbah 
And this story is in Sahih Bukhari. They are in Sinai and he delivers a khutbah. And it's a wonderful khutbah. So someone came to him and asked him, Oh Musa, alayhi salam, what a wonderful khutbah. You must be the most learned man in the world. Hmm? What he should have said was, praise is due to Allah. What he should have said was, all knowledge comes from Allah. What he should have said was, Beyond any learned man is he who is all learned. That is what he should have said. But he didn't say that. He said what the, what the PhD from the University of Singapore says. He says, yes, I am the most learned man in the world. This is, happen, this is what happens when you secularize knowledge. You take Allah out of the process of learning. He has nothing to do with it. I am the expert in my field. I'm the top scholar in my field. He says, yes, I am the most learned scholar in the world, the most learned man in the world. When you do that, when you do not recognize Allah as the source of knowledge, then he cuts off your internal sight. Can't see. Tabuli. So now Musa, alayhi salam, temporarily is without internal sign. And then Allah says to him, there is a servant of mine more learned than you are, Musa, alayhi salam. So Musa, alayhi salam, says, I'd like to meet him. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him instructions to take a fish, put it in a basket, travel in the direction where the two seas meet, majma'ul bahrain, where the two oceans meet. And when the fish jumps out of the basket, there you meet him. This is a rather humiliating thing for the most learned man in the world to do, put a fish in a basket, and I'm the most learned man in the world. This is the way I'm going to meet him. Allah cuts him down. Cuts him down. Learn humility. If you really are learned, the sign of knowledge is humility. So he goes, and eventually he meets him. He's called Khidr, alayhi salam, which means green. This is a man more learned than Musa, alayhi salam. And there's a difference between his knowledge and this knowledge. This knowledge can grow old and grow stale and be superseded by other knowledge and so become obsolete, like the computer you had ten years ago, obsolete now. But this knowledge remains always green. This knowledge is always vibrant, always relevant, always fresh, like a fresh breeze. This is the knowledge of Khidr, alayhi salam. That's why he's Mr. Green. Musa alayhi salam asks, can I accompany you so I can learn from you? But it's difficult, really difficult for a one-eyed man to learn from a two-eyed man. Really difficult. So he has his PhD, you see, from MIT. So he believes he knows all. Khidr alayhi salam says, you ain't going to be able to show patience with me. How correct was that answer up to this day? But he keeps on insisting, I want to go with you. Okay, you can come along. But on the condition, don't ask any questions unless I explain to you. Shut your mouth. Cut him down. And so they travel. And then they come to the sea or the water and there they board a boat. 
Sahih Bukhari tells us a nice story about what happened on the boat. A little bird came and sat on the, on the sail of the boat. And then the, bo the bird flew down, dipped its beak into the water, and flew back up with one drop of water inside the mouth. Khidr alayhi salam points to the bird and he says to him, Musa, the knowledge that you have plus the knowledge that I have when compared to his knowledge is like the one drop of water in the beak of the bird when compared to this vast ocean of water. That is the first lesson to teach the one-eyed man. <laughs> and then three events occur. First of all, Khidr alayhi salatu waslam takes the rod and he, he, he scuttles the boat, breaks, breaks the bottom of the boat. And Musa alayhi salam is quite annoyed. Why do you do such a wicked thing? And then secondly, when they get off the boat, they come across a boy, and Khidr al-Islam kills the boy. And now Musa al-Islam is more than just angry because he remembers that he accidentally killed a man in Egypt. And what suffering he suffered because of this. So he's very angry now. He is demanding an explanation. Why did you do this? This boy is innocent. And then they came to a town which was very inhospitable. Would not offer any hospitality. Very much like lower Manhattan. And uh, not even if they are prepared to pay for it, these people would not show hospitality to Khidr al-Islam and Musa al-Islam. Probably think they are terrorists. <laughs> but there is a wall which someone had constructed. And this wall was crumbling. And Khidr al-Islam, from his own pocket, he pays for the wall to be rebuilt. And Musa can't understand. Why would you pay to do this in a town which does not show even elementary hospitality? You could at least demand a refund of the amount that you have spent. What is important about these three events is that on each occasion, Musa alayhi salam formed his judgment based on external observation. External observation and rational analysis. And yet, on all three occasions, he was wrong. Surah Al-Kahf is knocking at your hearts, warning you, warning you, Singapore, that in the age of Dajjal, if you depend only on your external observation and rational investigations to formulate your judgment, you will be wrong. Why? Because the Jal comes with two things, a river and a fire. But his river is a fire, and his fire is the cool waters of a river, said the Prophet alayhi salatu waslam. In other words, that appearance and reality will be completely different from each other in the age of Dajjal. It looks good, 
But it ain't good. It's dangerous. It looks bad. But the reality is different. It is good. It's just like durian. <laughs> you don't judge a durian by the external smell. Huh? You judge the durian by the internal taste. The external spell belongs to hell. Although some people would disagree with me. But internal taste belongs to heaven, although some people might also disagree with me. Anyhow. In the age of the Jal, appearance and reality are going to be completely different from each other. And so if judgment is based on external observation and rational inquiry alone, you're going to be wrong. And you'll pay a terrible price for your wrong judgment. Khidr alayhi salam explains, he says, this boat, what appeared to you to be bad was actually good. There is a king, a government which is coming, seizing people's property. And they're going to be seizing this boat. By scuttling the boat, damaging it, I save the boat. So when the king is gone, then the poor fishermen can repair their boat. It looked bad to you, but actually, I did them a favor. This little boy, you sometimes plant a seed, and you get a rose. And sometimes you plant a seed, and you get a scorpion. So when you sleep with your wife, make dua, oh Allah, the seed which I plant, grant that it may grow into something good and beautiful. I mean, Rabbi Habli min as So, this child was destined to grow into such a devil that his parents' state would have been